What's going on, everybody? It's your buddy, it's your pal, Spaz Phoenix, the YWC Reality Check, and this is an episode of Get Hyped, and we are mostly going to talk about Impact Rebellion, but um, it's going to be a little bit of a different sort of preview pod this time around. You guys know, normally, I come up here, tell you, hey, WWE's doing this, NXT's doing this, I used to do, you know, AEW's doing this, but we don't do that anymore, and you guys know why. Um, it's going to be a little bit different this time around, because it is an Impact show, and I haven't caught up on Impact in a long time. I know a couple of various things that are kind of going on, and I've sort of kept in touch, uh, you know, on social media, through Instagram, Twitter, or whatever, but I haven't actually watched Impact in a long time. And I'll tell you why I'm doing this preview, selfishly, and, and primarily for myself, because I'm going to Rebellion on Sunday. It's in Toronto. It's at a place called the Rebel Complex, which I've never been to before. So... I'm going to give you sort of a different kind of preview. Uh, I don't know what's going on storyline-wise, other than the main event, realistically. Um, but there's a lot of wrestlers that I, I really enjoy. There's a lot of wrestlers that I'm very opinionated about, as you guys know. But, in the absence of, hey, this story's going here, and this story's going here, let's delve deep into the whatever, I'm going to use this as an opportunity to also talk about Destiny. Uh, you guys know Destiny is the indie that I go to here in Mississauga, which for those of you uh, around the rest of the world is just outside uh, Toronto at the Don Koloff Arena. Um, I have to, I have to sort of say that if I'm going to talk about Impact, I kind of have to talk about Destiny because I mean we all have our own idea of when like the key. Like, the high point of old-school TNA was there, you know, when AJ Styles was there, when Beer Money was there, when you had the the, the triple threat matches with uh, with Daniels and Samoa Joe, or, you know, the height of the X Division when, uh, when they were innovating stuff like uh, Ultimate X, Elevation X, uh, the Steel Asylum, <laughs> that kind of stuff. Uh, but I fell off, like a lot of people did, and, you know... And this is not a criticism of Impact. This is just me giving you guys my perspective. I came out of a WWE house show with uh, with another family member of mine, and they were handing out flyers for a, a show in Mississauga, and I'd never been to an indie show before. You guys know me. I've been very much a WWE guy most of my life. And the main event was Pete Dunne versus John Morrison for something called the Destiny Championship. And we sort of looked at each other and went, do you want to go to that? I I'd go to that. And we went. And if it wasn't for Destiny, I wouldn't have started watching Impact again. And that, again, that's not a slight. That's just a big shot in the arm for Destiny. It got me into people like Ethan Page, people like Josh Alexander. Uh, I got to see people I knew, obviously. Like, we got to see... Um, I got to see everybody from James Ellsworth to Pete Dunne to Mustache Mountain to uh, John Morrison to Badass Billy Gunn. Uh, recently, they had the Dudleys, or sorry, I should say, Devon Dudley and his boys. Um, but it got me, for the first time, I got that sort of feeling that people got, you know, oh, so-and-so's coming to WWE, you better get ready for this. For me, that was Shotzi Blackheart. When Shotzi Bla I saw Shotzi Blackheart at a couple of Destiny shows, uh, I had one of her opponents cut a promo on me in the merch area because I was wearing a Shotzi Blackheart t-shirt. I thought that was the coolest thing ever. For me being a guy, again, mostly a WWE guy, you go, you watch the show, you leave, much more interactive, introduced me to a whole bunch of cool people that are now on regular TV, Shotzi Blackheart, uh... Red Death Daniel Garcia, Ethan Page, uh, Matt Menard when he was just known as Big Magic. Um, I don't know, who else? Uh, it introduced me to Josh Alexander. Josh Alexander was the adopted son of the Don Kolov Arena for the majority of the first several years of shows that I went to, but it introduced me to Trey Miguel. It introduced me to Deathwish Aiden Prince, who's on the uh, injury list right now, much like Josh Alexander. Shout out to both of them, and they are going to have something in common that we're going to talk about later. Um, but even now, um, like I watch Impact, and... I can't say it any other way other than here's Impact, who that I've known for a while, formerly as TNA, and it took me going to Destiny shows 
to get me back into Impact because there's a lot of crossover, etc. So what I'm going to do with this, long ramble to, to introduce the whole thing, I am going to go through the Impact Rebellion card. It's going to become very obvious very quickly that I don't know the stories. I don't know how we got to a lot of these. I'm just going to give you my thoughts, but I'm going to tell you how many ways that this is this sort of this show this Sunday, I can speak, I swear, ties into Destiny's show, Icons 3, that is coming out uh, at the Don Kolov Arena May 7th in Mississauga. So what I'm saying to you, I'm using Impact as sort of a jumping off point to encourage you guys, if you have never been to a Destiny show, if you're in the Toronto area specifically, this doesn't help people around the rest of the world. I'm aware of that. So this is going to be a very, uh, it might be a very niche podcast. Who knows if you decide that, hey, that's a little specific for me, Spaz, I'll catch the next one. Cool. But I'm going to say, if you're in the Toronto area, if you're going to Rebellion this Sunday, first of all, if you're going to Rebellion this Sunday, let me know. I, I'd be very, very happy to shake some hands and give some high fives. But also, if you're in this area and on May 7th you're looking for something to do, I hope you consider going to Destiny, to the Icons 3 show. I don't know how many tickets are left, I'm not going to lie, because I don't have their Twitter feed up in my face. Uh, I will say right off the bat, one cool thing for me at the Destiny show, we've got... Uh, Rio, I'm going to butcher the pronunciation of this, Rio de la Sangre, taking on Lince Dorado. Never ha never seen Lince Dorado live before, I'm going to see him at Destiny. Never seen him in any of the WWE house shows I've ever been to, but I'm going to see him at Destiny, and I'm going to see him in the front row. Let's be real for a second. But, that being said, and also, um, a side note, because I, I did see this on Twitter before I came on to, uh, to start recording, Channing Decker, who's another really, really cool guy, uh, really... Uh, Different, if you like different, uh, a lot of hardcore uh, match type things. I saw him in a hardcore match with Moose where he got put through a door. Isn't that nice? He's taking on Kenny King at the ta at the Impact Weekly taping that's happening after Rebellion. I won't be at that, but I'll be watching the following week because Channing Decker is somebody that uh, another person that I really like and another person that I've actually had a chance to chat to. Really, really cool guy. So it'll be really cool to see him on my TV in about a week's time. I'm recording this on Thursday for those of you that don't know. Um, so Kenny King, sorry about your luck. I hope Channing Decker destroys you. Um, let's get into the show. PCO versus Eddie Edwards in a last rights match, which, from what I can tell, is basically a casket match. I'm going to be really mean here. PCO I saw at Destiny before I saw an impact. That's going to be a recurring theme. Um, it's a monster type of match, so it's going to be his match, so it's going to be uh, a little out there, whatever. For Eddie Edwards, I like Eddie Edwards, but I'd like to see Eddie Edwards in a wrestling match. For the first time, I'm going to see Eddie Edwards live. Um, so I don't know how connected I'm going to be to this match in particular. It's going to be fun. I mean, it's a hardcore match with casket match rules. It'll be fun. Apparently, he's reunited with Alicia Edwards in the time that I have not been doing my homework, which is fine. I know they... Uh, they split up storyline-wise when he was in the Honor No More faction. Uh, it's kind of hard to have the Honor No More faction when I don't think a lot of them are there anymore, and plus Ring of Honor is actually a thing again, being run by the other Cocaine Bear. It's fine, don't worry about it. Um, I'm sure it'll be fun. I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm sure it'll it'll fit its spot on the card. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. Uh, what I am looking forward to is the design, which was formerly uh, Violent by Design, but Eric Young has gone back to WWE. So we have Diener running the show now. He's got We've got Alan Angels, who's come over from, uh, from AEW. I'm not sure if he's still an AEW talent and doing things in Impact, or whether he's actually got an Impact uh, contract and he's signed on with them now. I don't know. If somebody knows, please let me know down in the box below. Uh, but Alan Angels is fantastic. Sammy Callahan, I know when I was watching last, they were trying to recruit him and they shaved his head and he looks really weird with a shaved head, but I like Sammy Callahan. Sammy Callahan teamed up, oh, going into my destiny history now, because this is before time, before uh, COVID and the before time and the long, long ago, but I do believe that one of the matches I saw was Sammy Callahan and Josh Alexander versus Mustache Mountain. But now that I'm thinking about that, I think I've got that wrong, so don't quote me. Either way, I've seen Sammy Callahan live. It's a good time. And the, uh, the fourth member of their team is Khan, which is, uh, for those of you that don't know, is Connor, fr formerly of the Ascension of WWE slash NXT back in the day. And that dude is fucking massive. So 
Three of the four of them are going to take on Dirty Dango, who was at the last Destiny show, Joe Hendry, who I've only seen, like, twice, and uh, I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> All right. If you're listening on headphones, sorry about that. Dirty Dango, who was at the last Destiny show, Joe Hendry, who I would, I'm would i looking forward to seeing live because he looks like he boils a lot of piss and that'll be a lot of fun, and Santino Morella, who is Santino Morella. Um... I saw not too long ago a tag team match where he tagged up with Heath and they were called the two man band for the night. It was fun. Um, I mean, the design, I'm going very loose logic here. The design is an actual faction and Dirty Dango, Joe Henry, and Santino Morella are three individuals. Logically, the, uh, the actual team should win. Um, and I'll go with that because the designer kind of fucked up and violent and weird and seeing super happy characters like Santino Morella get absolutely slaughtered. There is something funny about that. It's like, um, oh, for those of you that saw AEW Dynamite this week, it's like uh, Nakazawa and Cutler getting destroyed by the Blackpool Combat Club. Because in AEW, if you came from WWE, you must be a bad guy. Looking at the outcasts, looking at the Blackpool Combat Club, looking at the Jericho Appreciation Society, etc., etc., etc. Um, anyways, trios match should be fun. Um, the Death Dolls, which is Jessica and Rosemary, uh, somebody's gonna have to in tell me down in the box below because the last time I knew Jessica and Rosemary were were two of the four members of Decay. Is Decay not a thing? I still see clips of uh, Black Taurus wrestling, and I haven't seen anything about Crazy Steve in a while. Is Decay not a thing anymore? If that's true, that's gonna bum me out. If for no other reason than I really liked their entrance and I wanted to hear their music live. They're taking on Taylor Wilde, who is a long-standing TNA slash Impact talent, and Kylan King, who I don't know too much about. Taylor Wilde's apparently a goth now, that's cool. And they're a tag team called The Coven. Um, apparently they're the tag team champions right now, which is kind of fun. I'm gonna go with Jessica and Rosemary, because I like Rosemary, and I like the fact that I'm actually going to be in the crowd for once when a eat her or bite her face off chant goes off. So straight away, I'm going with the Death Dolls. No offense to Kylan King, who I don't know anything about, or Taylor Wilde, um, who is awesome, and if she's doing this cool goth thing now, then cool. I'm going to use that as a jumping point to hop back over to Destiny, who actually have, I've been saying it for a while, who actually have a women's championship match now. Uh, or sorry, an actual rest women's championship now. Uh, it's held, currently held by Ashley Dambois, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly, uh, and it's called the Destiny Revolution Championship. Um, I stumble over the pronunciation of that for obvious reasons, but it's in a six-pack challenge taking on Killer Kelly, Lady Frost, Ray Lynn, who I'm not too familiar with, Vanessa Craven, and Zoe Sky. So six-pack challenge at that Destiny Icons show that, I was, uh, that I'm was that i going to be plugging to you guys all night. And uh, yeah, met Ashley Dembois at the last show. She's an absolute sweetheart. Carrying on, and we're not, uh, we're not done talking about Killer Kelly yet either. The Bullet Club, which is Ace Austin and Chris Bay in this particular situation, taking on the Motor City Machine Guns. Okay, pause. Pause right there. Every single time I, I get into a conversation about Impact with you guys, or every time we get, we get into a conversation about the Bullet Club, I say that I never watched ROH at its pomp, and I don't watch New Japan. I know that Bullet Club is a thing, and it, to me, for a long time, it was like, oh, it's that other NWO-ish group that sort of happens over there. And then... Jay White came to Impact and brought, like, I guess, like, the Impact contingent of the Bullet Club, which I think is now, uh, it's now led up by, what the heck is his name? Oh, David Finley, uh, which we're going to talk about in a second. I, regardless of what banner they're under, uh, the tag team that's representing the Bullet Club in this match is Ace Austin and Chris Bay, who are two guys that individually I enjoy, and as a team, I think they are fucking fantastic. Motor City Machine Guns, gonna say it one more time, got to see them not too long ago taking on, oh, who did they take on? Destroy, which is Gabriel Fuerza and Vaughn Vertigo, who are an awesome team in Destiny, or they're 
or at least they were in a faction with Death Wish Aiden Prince. I don't quite know what the situation is there right now. Never mind. The the match was fucking fantastic, and it was for the Destiny Tag Team Championships, if my memory serves me correctly, which I hope it does. Um, Motor City Machine Guns are always going to hold a, a hold a spot in my heart. They uh, they're kind of like, and this is terrible. You can't say, oh, they're the this version of this. When I was getting into TNA back in the day, I saw the Motor City Machine Guns, and it's like, oh, this is their Hardy Boys, which doesn't really make any sense because there's not really any direct compar direct parallels to draw other than the fact that that's where they sort of sat in my fandom. Hardy Boys were this in WWE, Motor City Machine Guns were this in uh, in TNA. So, got four guys that I have a shit ton of respect for. Alex Shelley, Chris Saban, Ace Austin, Chris Bay. Now, throw in the fact that it is an ultimate X match for the Tag Team Championships, and this... Looking at the card, just saying, might be the match of the night. I. It's really hard for me to vote against the Motor City Machine Guns. Bias is coming out over anything else like that. But at the same time, uh, apparently Austin and, and Bay are the champions right now. If they retain, once again, it's not going to hurt my feelings. Now, once again, switching over to the main event of Destiny Icons 3, happening May 7th in Mississauga at the Don Koloff Arena. If you're around, you should go. Is those two, plus David Finley, taking on the Rascals in a trios match, which is cool. Trey Miguel, again. Again, I was introduced to by Destiny uh, when he became their Next Generation Champion, which that title doesn't exist anymore. I think it became the New Era Championship. But that's besides the point. That's how I was introduced to Trey Miguel. I really, 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 really like Trey Miguel. When, uh, when MSK came over to NXT say that three times fast, I was really hoping that Trey Miguel was going to come over and complete the trio, but then WWE went stupid and and destroyed that tag team. Now, Wes Lee is kicking ass on his own as the North American champion, but his partner still got fucked, in my opinion, just just putting it out there. So, going to see Trey Miguel again, that's awesome. Going to see Zachary Wentz just getting to wrestle, that's awesome. And Myron Reed is the third member now of the Rascals, and I've never seen him before. So that's really, really cool for me. That's a great trios uh, main event, and means I'm getting a double shot of Bullet Club once in April and once in May. As I say, once again, May 7th, go check out um, go check out the Destiny uh, Icons 3 show if you are around and are able to do so. Uh, don't know, don't know, don't know, don't know. Um, actually, it just came up in my feed. A couple of second row seats remain, third row seats are moving fast, and general admission are still available. Oh, yes. Convenient Twitter is convenient. Now, again, let's go back and say... Here's some more people that I was introduced to from Destiny. Actually, that's not true. Uh, two out of the three of them, I was. Trey Miguel, I've already said, uh, I was introduced to by Destiny. Actually, Jonathan Gresham, when the ROH thing sort of was happening in Impact for a while, was introduced to Jonathan Gresham on Impact TV, so that's slightly different. But I have seen him fight at Destiny, so that's cool. And Mike Bailey signed his Impact contract in a Destiny ring after a match with Josh Alexander that was fucking phenomenal. I'll just put that one out there right now. So when you say Trey Miguel versus Jonathan Gresham versus Mike Bailey in a triple threat, or sorry, in a three-way elimination match for the Impact X Division Championship, I mean, we got more fireworks, don't we? Um, I think it's kind of cool, kind of unique that we have this X Division match happening over here, but the Ultimate X match is happening over here for the tag team titles. I think separating the division from that match is kind of cool. Um, I don't know when the last time they did an Elevation X match was, but I'd really like to see that come back. Not going to lie. Um, I'm really, really, really biased towards uh, Mike Bailey, so with all due respect to Trey Miguel and Jonathan Gresham, I hope Mike Bailey picks up the title off Trey Miguel. And also, that title seems to have a bunch of graffiti on it at the moment, so I don't know if Trey Miguel is doing some kind of NWO thing, but I guess I will see it on the night. One thing I do know, and I don't know how it started, but I know it's been feels like it's been going on for a while, is Tommy Dreamer and Bully Ray are fighting 
and it was the last time I saw them arguing it was uh, moderated by the guy that does busted open radio with them and they were throwing coffee at each other and whatnot that's the the limited scope of what I know about the Bully Ray Tommy Dreamer thing I mean they've got years and years and years and years and years of history to play on between those two they can basically pull out whatever story they want no problem with that whatsoever but we are having a 10-man hardcore war with Team Dreamer, which is Dreamer, Frankie Kazarian, I'm going to butcher the pronunciation of this, Yuya Yumura, Killy Kelly, and Bapinder Gajar, taking on Team Bully, which is Bully Ray, Kenny King, Masha Slamovich, and the Good Hands. Masha Slamovich and Killer Kelly, I'm sorry, they are the ones that I'm going to be focusing on in this match. I like both of them. They're both great people. I've had the good fortune, yes, at Destiny, of meeting both of them. So that's what I'll be focusing on in this match. I, I love Bully Ray. I love. I just want. I don't even need Bully Ray in a match. I just want Bully Ray to come out and be an asshole. That's absolutely fine by me. Um, don't think I've ever seen Yuya Yamura before, unless he's done some crossover with uh, with AEW. But again, I'm not even 100% sure that I'm pronouncing that correctly, so if I'm not, apologies. I really like the fact that Frankie Kazarian sort of went home to Impact. And he's another one that I've been a fan of for years, and I've never gotten to see live. So I'm just happy that I'm going to get a chance to see him live. The other ones, uh, Kenny King, The Good Hands, uh, Bupinder Gujar, uh, Yuya Yamura are names that I'm not as familiar with. I'm sure they'll uh, fill the slots, so to speak, and that sounds super disrespectful, so I apologize, but it is it is what it is. Uh, Tommy Dreamer is is one of those guys, he's the opposite of Bully Ray, I just want Tommy Dreamer to come out and be like the beloved figure that Tommy Dreamer is. I think if they did something like like Bully Ray was in one corner, Tommy Dreamer was in the other corner, and let their teams fight for them. I think that would be a thing that they could probably play with a bit more. I don't know how much longer Tommy Dreamer and Bully Ray have in wrestling. That's not me saying that they shouldn't be wrestling anymore. I just, I mean, the guys have been wrestling for years, and to quote Chris Jericho, they get thrown at the ground for a living. So that doesn't last forever. It just doesn't. And that's... Again, once again, tripping over my words to say I really don't want to be offensive when I say that, but um, like I say, Frankie Kazarian, Killer Kelly, uh, Masha Slamovich, there's other people that I'm going to be focusing on in this match, and you guys, you guys know me. At least once a card, there has to be a big pile of people match, and this is going to be the big pile of people match, and it looks like a lot of fun. Um, now, I hope they keep that... Now, this is me just being a nerd for a second. I really do hope that they keep that away from the Last Rites casket match thing, because, I mean, they're just two different versions of a hardcore match. Oh, I didn't mention when I was talking about the Bullet Club that also, uh, at the Destiny Show, on May 7th, Icons 3, at the Don Kolov Arena, El Phantasmo is taking on Trent Seven. Because why the fuck not? <laughs> That's going to be a lot of fun. Women's Championship match. Now... People are going to really have to fill me in on all the gaps here. Uh, it's Mickey James versus Jordan Grace versus Deanna Perrazzo. If Mickey James is cleared to compete, and she's the champion right now, um, if she's not cleared to compete, then she will vacate the title, and Jordan Grace versus Deanna Perrazzo will be for a new champion. Uh, I don't know what the story is behind her injury. I'm just reading the caption on the. Uh, on the Wikipedia page. I'll be bluntly honest with you guys. Um, I've sort of got a love-hate relationship with Mickie James, not gonna lie, not saying she's not talented, not saying she hasn't contributed more than her fair share to the history of women's wrestling, because she obviously has, but not everything she's done has been up my street, and that's the nicest way I can put it. Jordan Grace is an absolute fucking specimen uh, who wants skilled people, and I really like Diana Perrazzo. I really, I really do, and when she did the whole champ champ thing, when she wasn't actually the Impact Champion, but she had the AAA and the ROH titles before she, when she picked up the ROH title from Roxy before Roxy became Roxanne Perez in NXT, that's how that went, right? Uh, when she was doing the champ champ challenge, I thought that was great. Anybody can come out, anybody can tell me what title they want to fight me for, and we'll do it right then and there. I thought that was awesome. That was the John Cena US Invitational, sort of taken up to the next level. I, when they when they had her come on to Dynamite for a night, 
Uh, and I think she had the match with Mercedes Martinez. I'm really going to mess that up, aren't I? I just was so happy. And again, with no disrespect intended to Impact, I was so happy for her to see her on a, a big stage like Dynamite, a bigger crowd, a uh, larger televised audience, etc. I thought that was the best thing. I thought AEW would have snapped her up. I thought WWE or NXT would have snapped her up by now, but that hasn't happened, and she's doing just fine in Impact. So maybe I should rethink a couple of things. Um, if it's a triple threat... I want Deanna Prazo to win if it's one-on-one -on -one against Jordan Grace. Like I say, Jordan Grace is a mountain to climb, and Deanna Prazo versus Jordan Grace one-on-one -on -one for Deanna Prazo to walk away with that championship would also not hurt my feelings. Spoiler alert, either way, I don't want anybody else to win this match but Deanna Prazo. but that's just me. And as I said, throw it over onto the other side, and I've already talked about it, but I'm going to talk about it again. The Destiny Revolution Championship that's going to be fought for at Icons 3. Ashley Dambois, uh, Killer Kelly, Lady Frost, Ray Lynn, uh, Vanessa Craven, and Zoe Sky. Lady Frost is another one that I saw at Destiny before I saw her anywhere else. So, uh, yeah, that's going to be the uh, repeated uh, thing of the night, is it not? Uh, the last match... And once again, I say, um, introduced to Josh Alexander through Destiny Wrestling, I saw him get handed his contract by Scott Demore in a Destiny ring as well. So there's a little bit of a through line here if you haven't picked it up just yet. He's injured. Uh, he had to vacate the title. And I hope, that's kind of why I hope the Mickey James thing isn't true or she's actually at the show because... You don't want to do two stories back to back. If it's a real life situation and I'm just ignorant to it, then pardon me. But if it is a kayfabe thing, you don't want to do two stories the same because one will take away from the other and that's just the way it is. Kushida versus Steve Macklin. Now, this title's been vacated, as I said, because Josh Alexander is injured. Right now, Steve Macklin, going over to the other side, is the interim Destiny World Champion after our champion, Deathwish Aiden Prince, got injured. You guys would have seen me on uh, on Twitter, on Instagram, etc. I was really plugging the hell out of, uh, out of a shirt that they had made for him um, just to help him with his, you know, recoup and recovery and all that kind of thing. So it's going to be <coughs> really, really bittersweet for me specifically if Steve Macklin is holding Josh Alexander's belt because he's hurt and Aiden Prince's belt because he's hurt. That's just... That's just unfortunate personified, is it not? And, again, Steve Macklin, really, really great, intense wrestler. Uh, he kind of does the Punisher thing, and by kind of, I mean a lot. I should like him. I really should like him, but there's something about him... That, uh, something about him as a, as a wrestler, as a performer, that just... It doesn't draw me in, and it bums me out because I like the Punisher. You guys have hear, heard me come on here and ramble about Marvel when I'm not talking about wrestling. I think, uh, what's his name? Oh, that's going to bug me now. John Bernthal, uh, in the uh, Marvel Netflix version of the Punisher, was one of the best castings Marvel's ever done. I like the Punisher character. I like the Punisher aspects that Steve Mackman puts into his character. He's a no-nonsense, intense, I'm going to punch you straight in the face wrestler. I should love this guy, and I don't know why I don't. So maybe I'm just a dick. But also, Kushida's a lot of fun, let's be real. Um, Kushida was a lot of fun in NXT. Kushida was a lot of fun, uh, or he has been a lot of fun with uh, with Time Machine, his, his trios team, along with the Motor City Machine Guns. And, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, to uh, Emilio Albi, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, uh, who's running Destiny. And how I would love to see Kushida in person, front row, at Destiny, but I'm going to have to settle for seeing him in the main event of Rebellion at the Rebel Complex instead. I really hope Kushida wins. I It makes sense to put the title on a heel when you know Josh Alexander is on his way back, because he's going to be the conquering triumphant babyface anyway, so put it put the title on Steve Macklin when you know Josh Alexander is about to come back. I think that's the way to go. I think with everybody being really, really bummed about Josh Alexander's injury, 
have a feel good moment for Kushida. That's just my two cents on that. Um, like I say, I have to. I'm going to keep putting this caveat onto everything. I haven't kept up nearly as much as I should for Impact, which is why I've sort of used this preview as an excuse to massively plug Destiny because I wish more people knew about. Destiny. Um, you guys would see on social media as well, I've been advocating pretty goddamn heavily for What Culture's Simon Miller to come show up at a Destiny show, and I'm still advocating for that. So that's that's just something altogether. But I'm going to say it one last time. If you are in the Toronto area, if you are going to be at Rebellion this Sunday and by some stretch of the imagination, you've found this podcast and you want to come and say hello or give me a high five or give me a handshake or whatever, or hey, you want to come up and tell me my podcast sucks. You can do that too, I guess. Uh, but please do so, honestly. Um, if you're going to take my word for it and try to check out the Destiny Icons show, same thing, same goes. If you're in the area, if you're coming to the Destiny show, if you come, like you say, if you're coming to Icons 3, I mean, the main event is Bullet Club versus the Rascals. You got a six woman. For the women's championship and El Phantasmo versus Trent Seven, and that's just the first three matches we had announced. Oh yeah, plus you get to see Lince Dorado live and in the flesh, which is also kind of cool. Come find me, shake my hand, give me a high five. It's all good. Uh, I guess I could say the same thing for yes, I am going to Forbidden Door Two because it's also happening in Toronto. Yes, I am going to SmackDown in August. And yes, I'm going to whatever the next show is that will be announced when we get to Destiny Icons 3. Icons is in a couple of weeks. Um, Impact Rebellion is this coming Sunday. Let me know what you guys think down in the box below. There's massive gaps in my knowledge leading into this pay-per-view on Sunday. So if there's any, any, uh, any granular bits of information, any uh, plot holes that you think I need plugged, please put it down in the comment section below or find me at Spaz Phoenix. I hope you guys have enjoyed this ramble. I've enjoyed giving it to you. That doesn't sound right at all, does it? I'm going to stop talking now. I've been Spaz, your YWC reality check. Subscribe up there, talk down there, start a conversation. Keep all these conversations going. Don't be a stranger. I will talk to each and every last one of you later, but for right now, I'm tagging it.